In the year 2010, the world held its collective breath as plans were unveiled for a monumental undertaking, the construction of the tallest skyscraper the world had ever seen. This towering ambition aimed not only to surpass the astonishing record set by the Burj Khalifa, but also to breach the astounding milestone of one kilometer in height. When topped out, this would absolutely dwarf the Burj by almost 200 meters, a true testament to human engineering. It poised to become a marvel that defied the boundaries of possibility. However, this project faced its fair share of challenges over the years, from daunting engineering hurdles to complex political issues. Eventually, it was left abandoned, a giant silhouette in the Arabian desert. But in 2023, a new chapter began, with official plans to revive the towering endeavor. Global contractors were called upon to submit proposals, rekindling hope for this achievement. However, it's still a tough road ahead, and the big question remains, will they make this towering dream a reality? Join us on this journey as we explore the story behind this giant building. Stay tuned for updates as we uncover the details, successes, and challenges in the resolute quest to complete the Jeddah Tower. In the world of towering ambitions and iconic skyscrapers, the story was set in motion with the construction of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. By April 2008, this monumental structure had soared to an impressive 160 floors, firmly establishing itself as the world's tallest man-made creation. While it would take another 18 months to complete the Burj Khalifa, including the addition of a towering 242 meter spire at its pinnacle. Dubai had already captivated the world's attention. Across the border in Saudi Arabia, a powerful figure was closely watching the Skyland race. That figure was none other than Saudi billionaire Al Walid bin Talal, one of the wealthiest and most influential individuals on the planet. Inspired by Dubai's architectural triumph, Al Walid unveiled his audacious vision to surpass Dubai by constructing what he boldly claimed would become the world's tallest tower. The monumental undertaking was to be the centerpiece of a grand waterfront development known as the Jeddah Economic City. Located 80 kilometers northwest of Mecca, it was more than just a construction project. It was a symbol of Saudi Arabia's bid for regional dominance, subtly asserting its presence over the United Arab Emirates. Al Walid was no stranger to grand ventures. His extensive portfolio included substantial investment in global giants like Apple, News Corp, Netscape, and Motorola, all made possible by the vast wealth generated from Saudi Arabia's abandoned oil reserves. He had also acquired ownership of prestigious properties like the Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts, New York's Plaza Hotel, London's Savoy Hotel, and Monaco's Monte Carlo Grand Hotel. The year was 2007 when Prince Al Walid, owner of Saudi holding company and the Saudi Arabian prince first laid out his vision. He envisioned not just a towering one mile skyscraper but an entire city. The vision sought to fulfill multiple objectives, showcasing the immense wealth and power of Saudi Arabia, enhancing the reputation of Jeddah by positioning it as the gateway to the holy city of Mecca and not least driving up the land values in the vicinity, transforming the district surrounding the tower into an extension of the city. To bring this colossal dream to life, a consortium of investors, including the Kingdom Holding Company, came together in 2009 to establish the Jeddah Economic Company. This entity would spearhead the development of Jeddah Tower 
and the accompanying Jeddah economic city. Still, the crowning achievement of this endeavor lay in the hands of its builders. The Saudi Bin Laden Group, a company with a unique historical legacy, was awarded the construction contract. Their notable past projects include the iconic Abraj Al Bayt in Mecca, the fourth tallest building globally as of 2023. And in March 2010, visionary architect Adrian Smith took the challenge of designing an extraordinary skyscraper. Smith embarked on a journey that would capture the world's imagination. Adrian Smith had a track record of pushing architectural boundaries, with projects like the Zifeng Tower in Nanjing, China, the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago, and the Jin Mao Tower in Shanghai, and even the Burj Khalifa itself, all towering achievements on the global stage. Backing this ambitious endeavor was the Kingdom Holding Company, and in October 2010, they solidified their commitment to a significant agreement alongside MR Properties. Nevertheless, this audacious project faced its share of uncertainties. In May 2008, soil tests raised questions about the proposed site's ability to support a one-mile-high skyscraper. Scaling back by up to 500 meters became a consideration and plans for foundation work in late 2012 took shape. The project's completion wavered between 2017 and late 2016, depending on construction progress. In 2009, amidst the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, rumors surfaced of a project pause and Bechtel, the initial engineering firm, distancing itself from the venture. However, the KHC swiftly quashed these speculations, affirming the project's continuation. As the years progressed, Prince Al-Walid's vision moved closer to realization, with an estimated construction cost of $1.2 billion. On April 1, 2013, um, on April Fool's Day, construction officially began, marking a moment of great significance. Initial progress was marked by the driving of foundations deep into the earth, a vital step for the tower's stability. By December 2013, the foundations were complete, setting the stage for the tower to rise from the desert floor. Again, challenges soon emerged. In September 2015, a crane belonging to the Saudi Bin Laden group collapsed at the Grand Mosque, resulting in the tragic loss of 118 lives and injuries to hundreds more. This incident triggered a series of inspections by the Saudi government, leading to delays in construction. Notwithstanding these setbacks, the tower reached 70 meters by July 2015 and grew to 110 meters, comprising 26 floors by November 2015. The year 2016 marked another significant milestone as the tower surpassed 150 meters aligning with one of the most widely recognized thresholds for defining skyscrapers. By the end of that year, the tower had exceeded 200 meters in height, cementing its status as a true skyscraper by all definitions. As the calendar turned 2017, optimism abounded. Initial reports suggested that Jeddah Tower might see completion by 2019. However, the pace of construction did not align with these projections. By August 2017, the tower had reached the 62nd floor, standing at a height of around 250 meters. This progress rate was significantly slower than anticipated, with an average annual height increase of only about 80 meters. Then, in November 2017, a seismic shift occurred. A remarkable times in Saudi Arabia, the hugely influential Sunni Muslim Kingdom. There's been an unprecedented anti-corruption purge with sweeping arrests of senior politicians and business leaders and members of the royal family. Prince Al-Walid and the chairman of the Saudi Bin Laden Group found themselves entangled in a high-profile anti-corruption crackdown led by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. In the realm of power and politics, MBS loomed as an enigmatic and influential figure. His ascent to the position of crown prince in Saudi Arabia held both promise and uncertainty, unveiling a gripping tale of ambition and intrigue. 
This purge resulted in their detention for over two months before the eventual release in late January 2018. While all these figures were embroiled in this tumultuous period, construction on Jeddah Tower continued, albeit at a snail's pace. The tower's height barely exceeded 260 meters as of early 2018, having grown by a mere 10 meters since August 2017. But the most bewildering chapter in the Jeddah Tower saga unfolded in May 2018. Construction ground to a complete halt, leaving the tower approximately one-third completed and standing at a modest height of around 260 meters. The reason for this abrupt stoppage remained shrouded in mystery. Reports suggested government intervention, with authorities directing developers to abandon the project in favor of a new venture, Neom, a planned city project announced by the Saudi Crown Prince in October 2017. This Neom project has been making headlines recently. Some sources also suggested a potential labor dispute in the Saudi Bin Laden group. However, none of these can be confirmed given the low transparency of Saudi authorities. Despite all of this, Prince Al-Walid remained resolute, vehemently denying these reports in an interview with Bloomberg. He affirmed his commitment to seeing the Jeddah Tower project true to completion, underscoring his unwavering belief in its potential to stand as a symbol of Saudi Arabia's grandeur. The tower was reported to resume in 2020, as it was showcased in a Twitter post. But we all know what was coming next. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. The pandemic made these plans uncertain, and construction never started. And so, the fate of the Jeddah Tower, once poised to pierce the heavens, hung in precarious balance, entwined in the winds of change sweeping across the kingdom. The tower still stands in the same condition as of 2023, being left to almost decay in the sands, which is likely to change with the most recent updates, which we will discuss later on in the video. Jeddah Tower stands as a testament to human ambition and innovation. Designed by Adrian Smith plus Gordon Gill Architecture, the skyscraper is the brainchild of the visionary architect Adrian Smith, who had previously left his mark on the world with the iconic Burj Khalifa. Jeddah Tower's towering height is projected to be at least 1,008 meters, judging by the tapering of the currently built structure would make it the tallest building or structure globally, surpassing even the Burj by 180 meters. Its location within the Jeddah Economic City Development, covering 50 hectares, adds a new dimension to the landscape. This three-phase project, with a price tag of $20 billion, envisions Jeddah Tower as its focal point, housing a Four Seasons Hotel, short rental apartments, Class A office space, and the world's highest observation deck. Beyond profitability, the tower aims to serve as a symbolic landmark, raising the value of the surrounding land and contributing to the growth of Jeddah. Smith's creative genius took inspiration from the Burj Khalifa when crafting the design of the Jeddah Tower. This masterpiece showcases a unique structural system known as the buttressed core, featuring a three-winged centrum. This innovative design not only adds an artistic touch but also enhances the building's stability and minimizes the impact of wind loads. The Y-shaped cross-section, formed by the three wings separated by 120 degrees, symbolically points towards the holy city of Mecca, aligning with the developer's vision to make Jeddah the gateway to Mecca. What sets Jeddah Tower apart from its predecessor, the Burj Khalifa, is its simplified yet equally mesmerizing shape. The tower's curtain walls smoothly slope from the base to the spire, with each wing tapering at slightly different rates. Along these graceful wings, notches are strategically placed, creating outdoor terraces that offer breathtaking views of the cityscape and the Red Sea. 
With no official floor count confirmed, experts speculate that the Jeddah Tower will exceed 200 floors, surpassing even the Burj Khalifa's 163 occupied levels. Jeddah Tower boasts over 240,000 square meters of floor area. The Jeddah Tower plan contains 59 elevators, including 5 double-deck elevators and 12 escalators, all crafted by the Finnish company Kone. These elevators facilitate swift access to the world's highest observation deck, traveling at speeds up to 10 meters per second in both directions. However, due to the risk of inducing nausea caused by the rapid air pressure changes, they cannot operate at faster speeds. At an elevation of 914 meters, the air pressure is notably 10% lower than at ground level, underscoring the need for efficiency and elevator design. The tower features three sky lobbies for seamless elevator transfers, with none serving from bottom to the highest occupied floor. One of the most remarkable features of the Jeddah Tower is its viewing platform, extending from one of the upper floors. This platform promises an exhilarating experience, offering panoramic views of the city and the Red Sea. This platform was initially intended to be a helipad, but the strong winds at such a height would make it too dangerous for any aircraft to land safely, leading to a scrapping of this idea. Overcoming the challenges of building such a colossal structure, the use of high-strength concrete and advanced structural design also assures the building's resilience. The tower's sustainability measures include the use of condensate water in the air conditioning system for irrigation and other purposes, harnessing natural cooling through differences in air temperature at various heights, and carefully orienting the tower to avoid direct sunlight. Jeddah Tower would stand as a symbol of architectural achievement, pushing the boundaries of what is possible in the world of skyscrapers. Which brings us to the most recent updates on this monumental project. The Jeddah Economic Company has reignited the flames of ambition, resuming the works on the Jeddah Tower, destined to pierce the sky at over 1,000 meters in height, officially back in full motion. As the Bin Laden Group has exited the project possibly due to the previously mentioned labor dispute, new contractors from around the world have been summoned to partake in the bidding process, as the race to complete this record-breaking structure gains momentum. The list of contenders includes renowned names such as Alma Bani and Nesman partners from the local scene, and global giants like China Harbor and Samsung C T and a host of other formidable players. These contractors are preparing their bids with a sense of urgency, as JEC has granted them a mere 3 months to put forth their proposals. Expectations are high for the formation of joint ventures uniting local expertise and international prowess. Prior to the tender's release, an independent assessment was commissioned to ensure the project's viability. The foundation and piling work are already in place, thanks to the impressive efforts of Germany's Bauer. Although Bin Laden Group is no longer at the helm of construction, the architectural and engineering teams led by Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill remain steadfast. With Kingdom Holding Company, Bosch Group, and Charbatli Group as its key stakeholders, Jeddah Tower is on course to surpass Dubai's Burj Khalifa, if all goes according to plan, which hasn't really been happening for this one. And we may see the master plan rise by 2027. This mega structure is the crowning jewel of the Jeddah economic city development, set to redefine the city's skyline and make a lasting mark on the world as the tallest man-made structure to ever be built until someone builds an even bigger one.